Hello, I'm Lennon Shongen, and today we're going to be doing Basic, Node, and Express. In the last video, we managed packages with NPM. Now we're doing Basic, Node, and Express. So we're going to be using REPL.IT for this again. And to open up REPL.IT, uh, just click on this link, and then it should open it up. OK, I guess we have to sign up for this uh, REPL to work. So just make a username, or just use Google, or even GitHub. So I, I guess I'll just use Google to sign up. All right, so there we go. I signed in using Google. Uh, now I got to go back to free code camp and let's see here meet the node console is what we're doing first and we have to modify the my app.js file to log hello world so go to my app.js and we'll just do console log hello world and now let's run it takes a little while to boot up has to do npm install and install all of our things that we have in package.json which what do we have in package.json well we have express we have body parser cookie parser and fcc express background so that's what it's installing right now and then it's starting it with npm start and here's our console it says hello world which is what we wanted and to test this we just want to copy this url and paste it into our solution link area and now we should be able to complete this challenge let's try it out and it is running tests and it timed out okay node is listening on port 3000 okay i think i just needed to add a semicolon at the end there that was weird because <laughs> now it works okay cool <laughs> let's go on to the next one start a working express server so they did this app.listen port for us already inside the server.js file looks like a lot going on here but basically what they're doing is they're setting up the port to run on port 3000 and then it's listening so that it's so that it actually runs and they're using this free code camp background package probably so that they can do tests and, and whatnot with it otherwise it'd look a lot simpler but basically for this challenge what we want to do is we want to make a git request uh route and that's done with app.git so right here var app equals express that's the app that we want so we're going to do app.git and then we're going to get when we go to the slash or like the home route then it takes a request and a response so it takes the function as a second parameter the first one is the request coming in and the second one is the response going out so to have a response go out we can just do res.send and we just want to send a string that says we want to send hello express so i'll just copy this over to here and that should be good um if i stop and run this again it might say hello express i'm not sure let's try it out listening on port 3000 so maybe i have to just do local host okay never mind no oh wow okay i just had to refresh it and now it says hello express all right cool so i think this should work for our test all i have to do is copy this uh url and paste it in here and say i've completed it let's try it out yep looks like it works serve an html file for this challenge we want to serve a html file by doing res.send file and then we send the path to the to that file so we'll go back to repl.it and we'll do a, another git request looks like i can do option shift down to copy it down just like in Visual Studio Code. And I want to comment this out for now with command slash. And then instead of sending hello express, I want to send, says res.send file. So we'll go res.send file. And we want to send this index.html file that's in our views folder. So we want to send the path to that. And it takes an absolute path, pretty sure. So that's why we have to copy this line, this line over. So our absolute path, I guess I'll set this as a var or let let our absolute path equal the directory name plus the relative path so we're going to do views so that'll go into this folder and then we want the file so it's going to be index.html and then we want to do res.send file and then we'll just set absolute path into here and let's try refreshing it see what happens maybe i have to stop and start it again yeah let's try it Looks like we got an error. Views is not defined. Oh, I think this might have to be in a string. That could be. Now let's try running it. Okay, it looks like it's working, but it says there's no such file or directory. Oh, because I need slash in front of here. Oh, sweet. There we go. So there we go. We got our absolute path, got the directory name, and then added in the slash views slash index.html to get into this HTML file, which is rendering 
this onto the page now by doing res.send file and then the path to that file. Now I should be able to test this out on Free Code Camp and say I've completed it and looks like it works, sweet. Now we want to serve static assets and we're gonna be doing this with app.use which will set a middleware of our express static path and I think this will just make things easier for us in the future. So basically what we wanna do is we want to take this app.use and put it in front of our routes. So we'll go app.use and we want to use express dot static or what is it yeah express dot static and then we want our path to our static assets and i believe that's in our slash public folder so i think we're going to just copy this into the express dot static part and also make this a string here and i think that's what they wanted for this one and so now this is acting as a middleware so whenever we get a new route it will have to go through this app.use part and run whatever is in it. So let's uh, let's try this out. Let's copy this over and try it. And it's not working. Maybe I have to stop and start it again. Let's, uh, let's try stopping and starting it. Oh, wow. It actually changed up the look of our file. And that's because there's a style.css inside of it. So I guess now it should work. Let's uh, say I've completed it and try it out. And it looks like it does work. Sweet. Now we want to serve JSON on a specific route. So right now we're serving HTML onto our home route, but we want to actually serve data. And the data we're going to be serving is in JSON format. So we're going to serve it on the JSON path. So we're going to go app.get. And then when they go to slash JSON, we're going to give them data. So we're going to do re request and res. And we're going to res.send, or we're going to do res.json actually, because it says that whatever's in it is JSON. And we want to serve the object message hello JSON. So we're going to copy this over, paste it in here. And now when we go to slash JSON, if I even can. Also, I probably have to stop and start it again. Or, oh, that's history. Okay, maybe I have to just copy this into my browser and then do slash json there we go we get hello json looks like it's working correctly reading message hello json when we do slash json so yeah now i can basically use this api it's so like if i was in my react project i can just do fetch and i can fetch this url and then i get the data so that's why this is so useful and we should be able to test this out now and let's try it looks like it works sweet now we want to use the .env file the .env file is for hiding certain values that you want to keep hidden from people. For example, this could be an API key, and API keys are used for like securing your API so that you're the only one that can use it. So this is done with the .env file, so let's see if we have that in here. does not look like we have a .env file right now, so it looks like I might have to create it in the .env file. Okay, so I guess I'll make a .env file in here, and then we want to store message style equals uppercase. So I'll just copy that over and no semicolon for this. It's just uh, by line. And then we can grab it by doing process.env.message style. So what we want to do here is we want to take that, go into myapp.js, and then we want to say process.env.message style. If that equals, if that equals uppercase, then we want to return hello json in uppercase otherwise we just want to do hello json so i'll go hello json and i think that's what they wanted let's try stopping and starting it again and then let's go to here and there we go it's uppercase so it looks like it worked so let's uh let's try testing this out let's grab the url paste it in and try it and yep, looks like it worked. Sweet. Now we want to implement a root level request logger middleware. And middleware is basically a function that gets executed before our res.send does. So for this challenge, we want to have a middleware. So to add a middleware, it's with app.use. So we'll go app.use and this app.use is going to take in a function that takes request res and next and now we can do stuff inside of this function and the thing that we want to do is we want to for every request it should log to the console a string taking the following format of our method and then our path and then our ip and we can get that by doing rec.method rec.path and rec.ip so that's what we're going to do and we also want to make sure we call next at the end so that's just saying go on to 
whatever else you're doing. We want to get our method. So we'll go let method equal rec.method. We'll say let our, what else do we need? We need a path and IP. So path equals rec.path and IP equals rec.ip. We can also do this a different way. We can just do let method path and IP equal rec. So this is using object destructuring and we can just delete that part. It's the same thing. And now we want to use this and we want to console log our method plus our path plus our IP, I believe. Well, it should take the format method, then space, then have a dash in here, I think. So I guess we'll add in a space and then also a dash in between these ones. And let's uh, try this out. Let's stop it and run it. Okay, I'm not getting anything in the console. Oh, there we go. Looks like it's working. It was a git request to the slash path. And then our IP is FFFF172.18.01. So maybe that's where I am right now. I think you can use that to find out where people are in the world. So yeah, it looks like it works. Let's try it out. Let's copy this over, paste it in, and say we've completed it. And yep, sweet. Looks like it worked. Now we want to chain middleware to create a time server. So basically chaining middleware is the process of adding a middleware function in between your path and what you send. So in this case, we want to make another route called app.git and we want to get at slash now. So we'll do slash now and we want a middleware function. So we'll add a middleware function here, which is rec, res, and next. And that is going to be our function for that. And then we want to add another argument, which is going to be what we actually send. And that's just going to have rec and res, request and response. And what we want to respond with is a JSON object taking the structure time rec.time. So I'll copy that first. And we'll go res.json and paste that object in there. But then in our middleware function, we want to basically add in this time part in here. So we're going to do rec.time equals new date.toString. So in here, we're going to do rec.time equals new date dot to string. And so now we can access rec.time inside of our actual sending function. Otherwise, this rec.time wouldn't even be here. It would just be null. So let's uh, try stopping and starting this again. And then let's try and going to slash now. Oh, I also have to add in the next. Yep. That's why it's just loading right now. So I have to do next here so that it actually moves on. And let's try stopping and running and refreshing this. And there we go. We get Wednesday, November 11th, 2020. Looks like it works. Sweet. So now let's just copy this URL, try it out into free code camp and say we've completed it. And it looks like it doesn't work yet. Oh, it should return a time that, oh, okay. <laughs> that was weird. It just took a while to check, I guess. So, all right, let's go on. Get route parameter input from the client. This is done with this colon format. So when we go to a path, we can do colon and then it's a wildcard basically that anything can be put there and then we can grab it by doing rec.params and then grabbing the user ID. So we're going to do this by building an echo server and it's going to be at slash wildcard word slash echo. So I'm guessing to do this one, we're going to have to get rid of these since it's a wildcard right at the slash. So I'm going to comment out those ones and we're going to do app.git and we're going to do slash and then wildcard with the colon. The wildcard is going to be word and then slash echo. Or actually, maybe I don't have to comment those out because we have slash echo at the end. Yeah, probably. Since we have slash echo on the end, it won't match it until it's uh, exact. And this will take rec and res. And what do we want to send? We want to send whatever our word is. So we're going to do res.json or send. It doesn't really matter. And we want to send echo word. So we're going to take this, paste it in here. And instead of just saying word, we're going to do rec.params dot word and that should work now let's try stopping and starting again okay and then when we go to slash word so i'll just say something and then echo see this string is exactly the same as what is put in here so it looks like it's working correctly and let's try testing it out copy this over paste it in and try it out and yep, looks like it works. Now we want to get query parameter input from the client. So query parameters are anything that comes after a question mark or like it comes at the end of the route after a question mark. And it's got by doing rec.query. So if we do rec.query.userID, it will get this number. So now we want to 
have an API endpoint of slash name. So we're gonna go into REPL and we're gonna do app.git and do slash name here for the route. And then we're gonna do rec request and response function. And we want to respond with res.json. And the JSON we want to respond with is our name. And the name is gonna take on the format of request.query.firstName and then plus a space and then plus our last name. So we're gonna do rec.query.lastName. And yeah, it wants the first name and then the last name. Oh, and it wants to be done with first and last. So actually, instead of first name and last name, we're just gonna do first and last. And now when we try this out, we should be able to go in here and do slash name and then question mark first equals Landon. And to chain it on, we use the ambersign. And then we can do and last equals Schlungen. Try that out, and there we can see our name is Landon Schlungen. It's pulling the values from first and last right here. So that's really cool. Let's uh, try testing this out in Free Code Camp. Paste it in and try it out, and sweet. Now we want to use Body Parser to parse post request. So post is another request similar to Git, except Git is just for getting data from the API. So that's what we've been doing with this so far. If we did an app.post, that's for actually posting server to this program so that it can be put into our database. But right now we're not using a database, but if we were, that's that's what it would be used for. And we want to add this body parser package to parse our post requests. So first we want to install body parser in our package JSON. So I think I saw this before that we already have it. So it looks like we already have body parser in our package JSON. So that's good. Now we want to actually use it. So to actually get it, we want to do let our body parser and it's going to equal our require. And what are we requiring? We're requiring body parser. So now we should be able to use whatever is in that actual package. And basically we want to use it for its middleware functionality by doing this body parser URL encoded. So I'm going to copy that and we're going to put it inside of an app.use right at the top. So we're going to do app.use and paste in that body parser URL encoded extended false. Not really sure what that does, but free code camp says we need it. So that's what I'm going to do. Looks like extended false is a configuration option that tells the parser to use the classic encoding, whatever that means. Values can be only strings or arrays. Oh, and then it, the extended version allows some different kinds of data. All right, let's try stopping and starting this and testing it. We really shouldn't see any outward change. So I'm just going to copy this over and try it out. And yep, looks like it worked. This one should be the last one for this section. So let's, uh, let's work it through. Okay, so now we want to actually make a post route. So get data from post requests. And it's going to be at the slash name path. So inside of our REPL, we're going to go right under the app.get slash name. And we're going to do app.post and the same route of slash name. And it's also going to take a request and response, same as the others, except we want to actually get the request.body, whatever is sent. So we're going to do, and our request.body is going to have a first name and a last name. So I guess first we're going to see what's in our request.body. So I'm going to do console.log request.body. And let's see what this gives us. So I'm going to rerun it, refresh this, and submit our first name and last name and see what it gives us. Invalid arguments, object null. Okay, well, I'm guessing that it's going to be last and first again. So we're going to just do res.json and we're going to send our name equals rec.body.first plus a space plus rec.body.last. So yeah, let's uh, try that. Refresh it submit it and it looks like it responded with our name that we submitted into the form so it looks like it's working sweet let's uh just copy this url for this last one and see if it works paste it in and say we've completed it and it looks like it works sweet uh next up we have mongodb and mongoose challenges and these are databases that we need to connect to our node.js and express the uh, thing that we just did so we're gonna connect those up in the next section, I'm guessing. Or maybe we'll just work with MongoDB and Mongoose. That's fine too. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed me going through the basic Node and Express challenges with you. If you learned something new, leave a like, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.